All right, I think we are good to go now. So um, we have Coach Natalie, who goes to Whittier College, and Calista, who attends Stanford. Um, and we are going to start out um, with either one of you, whoever wants to start. And can you just start out and by uh, introducing yourself and about how you and talk about how you got started playing golf? Um, so I don't know if you know my older sister Stephanie, who was also on here. She was playing golf when she was really little, so I kind of grew up into golf, and like I started at a young age. I think we both started around when we were five years old, so it's just been like a part of my life ever since I was really little. Um, hi, I'm Calista. Um, I started golf when I was seven, so I moved to the, I was born in the Philippines and moved to the U.S. when I was five, and I started golf two years later. Um, I started at the first tee program in San Diego. Um, and then I joined SCGA Junior shortly after that. And I just love being able to, um, at the first tee, being able to um, play with um, other kids my age and just learn to love the game with um, kids my age at the time. So, Awesome. I'm sure a lot of you girls also started at a young age, too. Um, and Calista, can you tell us about how you knew that you wanted to play college golf? Um. After starting um, playing competitively when I was eight years old, I knew that a big goal of mine was to play in college. Um, I knew that I loved competing and um, playing in the collegiate level was definitely one of the higher goals when um, playing um, junior golf. So I set that as a goal of mine. And um, I actually always set the goal that I would want to go to Stanford ever since I was 10 years old. Um, it was one of the colleges that really had caught my eye when we were doing like college presentations in elementary school. And from that point on, I really just set that in my in the back of my mind and work towards that. Awesome. Matt? Um, so I'm kind of opposite of Calista and I wasn't really sure that if I wanted to continue playing in college because uh, I think it was my sophomore year in high school, I kind of wanted to stop playing. I just didn't, we had a, a new girls team for our high school and I just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. But then I realized that I know I would regret not playing in college just because it's been such a big part of my life. So at the last moment, I think it was my junior year when I started applying or like looking into colleges, I was looking at more of like the lower levels because I knew I wouldn't be able to play at like a division one school. So it was kind of last minute, but I'm really glad that I decided to play. And what was the recruiting process like for you, Natalie? Um, so I actually did it through this website. I think it was called NCSA. So you build like your own profile, you put a swing video, and then you get to send out your profile to different schools. And I think you actually get notified when they watch your video or when they like kind of look through your profile. So I was, I was keeping in touch with a few Division II schools. And then I noticed Whittier College especially since it's really close to my house and I was really interested in that. So it was just like a really good profile or program to get your name out there to like really local schools and just see what would happen with the coaches. That's awesome. And Calissa, can you also talk about your recruiting process? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, I started, I, I started off by just listing a bunch of schools that I was interested in and just looking at those schools, I looked at the um, athletic website and looked for their coach's email and just reached out to the coaches, um, introducing myself, a quick summary of myself and like how I started playing, a few tournaments that I would be playing and just continued to maintain um, a good communication with them, even if they weren't replying back to me at first. Um, I just kept updating them and just making sure that I remained kind of on their radar and making sure that I made clear that I was still interested in um, potentially playing for them in the future. So I just constantly sent emails and kept them updated throughout my junior golf career. And did you get a lot of responses? Did coaches respond back to you or what was that process like? Um, yes. Yeah, so there's um, for the NCAA, there's a um, recruiting rule where they can't respond to us directly until we're a junior, um, our September of our junior year. So um, indirectly, they would send back like questionnaires that we were allowed to um, to fill out, and then they would talk to me through my golf coach or my high school golf coach. So they'd contact me through 
um, my high school golf coach, for example, and let them know that, oh, maybe Callista wants to go on a call at this time and we let's set that up. So it's very indirect at first, but they do find a way to co communicate with you since there are a lot of regulations. That's good information to have. Um, what do you think is the best part about playing on your team? Go ahead, Calista. Okay. Yeah, for me, um, it's definitely just building those friendships um, within your team. I think it's really great to be able to push each other as teammates um, since you, you are playing as a team, but then you're also competing with each other during practices and during qualifying. And it's just great to have a group of girls, especially coming into a new environment, um, coming from high school into college, to have that set of girls that you already kind of built this, um, this, built this relationship with, like just prior to coming into school. It's good to have that um, in the back, like as a support system, along with like the friends that you will meet at college. So I think that's one of the biggest things about college golf. Um, there's always going to be a support system for you. Um, you can continue to push each other as teammates and as competitors and while also working towards a, a common goal at like winning tournaments for sure. So uh, we'll pass that on to Aaliyah, uh, role model, and did you play any other sports? Sounds good. So I started golf when I was eight years old. I didn't start competitively until I was 12. Um, my parents didn't really get me into it. I played a bunch of different sports, actually. I did swimming, I did soccer, I did rock climbing, and I also had my, my piano and guitar at the time. So I did a lot of things when I was a kid. But I stuck with golf in turn and then went to a college. Uh, my biggest role model would probably have to be um, Lorena Ochoa. She had this passionate and ferocity about her when she was on the course to always do well. And I admired someone like that and I wanted to play competitively golf because of her. Awesome. Uh, can you, uh, Coach Steph, tell us a little bit about your golf journey into college golf? Um, just briefly, because we will be talking about that in another room. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I've been playing um, like Elias since I was younger and I think I started competitively around 12 and 13 as well. And then I actually played on our um, boys high school team because we didn't have a girls team. And then about sophomore years when I decided that I wanted to play college golf and I started the whole recruiting process and then now I'm a college, college, college graduate. So and then uh, back to you, Aaliyah, with that same question, you know, your golf journey. I know we briefly discussed it, but um, what kind of tournaments did you play in uh, just to give the girls an idea? Yeah, so I, I did play high school golf at uh, Corona Del Mar, but I also was a part of the SEGA. I played a lot of Toyota Tour Cup. FCG, Future Champions, and I played AJGA. So I just did like a, a big mix of those when I was playing high school to get recruited. And yeah, I, I just stuck with it. Awesome. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask both of you is with the recruiting process um, that you had, was it uh, stressful? Did you have a lot of options or were you certain like you knew where you wanted to go to school? And we'll start with Aaliyah this time. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a little stressful. It's daunting mostly because like as a 15 and 16 year old, you have these options to go to these prestigious colleges and you don't really know what choices to make. Um, so I did have I did have my fair share of options I wanted to go to. My dream school was USC, but at the beginning of my recruiting process, USC wasn't recruiting me, so I was looking at other schools. But in the end, I got to go to my dream school and everything worked out. And Coach Steph? Um, so my experience is a little different than Aaliyah. I, for a long time, I didn't have a lot of schools um, trying to recruit me, which was a little disappointing. And then all of a sudden, two schools, one school in Hawaii and a school in Florida popped up. And I was like, okay. And then my school actually emailed me, the coach. And um, a few weeks in, she was like, hey, you can come for a visit if you want to see the school. And as soon as I stepped on campus, I knew that was the school for me. I just loved the area. I loved the campus, the weather. Everything was perfect. And I told my dad, dad, this is it. I don't want to look at any more schools. Like, let me sign my letter of intent and I'm ready to get out here. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's where I landed. And I've enjoyed all four and a half years. So, Awesome. awesome. 
Um, uh, let's go back to Aaliyah. Um, can you tell me uh, in college, did you have a swing coach, a me mental coach, fitness, or was that all included with your team? Did you do something like that outside of college? Um, so I had a really good mix of both. I'm lucky enough that my mother is my fitness trainer. So along with USC's fitness trainer, I did have some help at home. I do have my own swing coach here in Orange County. And then my coach at USC also helps like fine tuning, making sure my swing looks good. And we do have a mental coach out at USC. So a lot of help from both sides off and on a campus. And Coach Steph? Um, a little bit like Aaliyah, I have my own swing coach here, but obviously I was a thousand miles away at school. So my coach at, at, um, at my campus, he kind of helped me a little bit too with the fine tuning things, like um, helping me understand how to play certain shots on the golf course. So he was kind of like the physical also slash mental coach, which was really nice. Um, and then all athletes had an athletic trainer, which we had 6 a.m. workouts every other day, which was a little crazy, but um, that helped me um, a lot physically and mentally because I just felt better and um, I didn't get as tired on the golf course. So, so um, going back to a little bit on that mental coach, um, kind of share with the girls like some of the things that they helped you prepare um, during your journey in college. Like what did that really involved and how often was that something that you did with that coach? You don't have to be extremely specific, but mentally, how helpful was that? And uh, let's go with Aaliyah again. Uh, so for USC, we meet up with our mental coach once a week, and that would be like through calls or in person. And the main focus is to be able to control yourself when you're on the course of course you know when you get really angry or super excited about getting a shot and making a birdie or a bogey it's more of like making sure you keep a really steady level of focus and awareness and being able to just control yourself control yourself excuse me overall so that was the main focus for our, our mental trainer um, for me, exactly, like Leah said, golf is very emotional, and there were times where I was super happy or super upset on the golf course, um, but one thing that my coach and I um, agreed on was, like, I'm a very, like, kind of, like, fun and, like, do-do-do person, so he told me, he's like, Steph, you know, um, out on the golf course, you need to remind yourself to have fun, so you need to do something, so I actually had, like, this little dance thing that I would, like, just randomly do on the fairway just to remind myself you know what Steph like you're doing the sport that you love even though it was a bad hole just forget about it move on do your dance and go to the next hole so it's a little something that I had <laughs> during my time at college awesome so uh, one of the last questions we're going to do because they're going to wrap us up and move us back to the main uh, room with everyone uh, give us one of your um, favorite golf course memories uh, Leah Ooh. My my favorite golf course memory, I think it would just be being out there with people you know and enjoying time. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in the world or just around the neighborhood. It's just being able to have fun on the course with your friends and make a good time. Um, I would say for me, it would be um, our school's first ever women's uh, win. I got to experience that with my team and my coach, and it was just really cool to bring home the, the W for our school. So do you have a favorite golf course memory that you might want to share? So maybe your best round or something that is really stands out to you as a golfer. And we'll start with Jennifer again. Oh, sorry. I was, um, so I would say last April actually was, um, it was the Triton Invitational in Missouri. And my team and I were in third place and we managed to come back on the second day and get first place and I'll always remember that day because it was a huge win for us and I personally shot um, a 70 on the second day which propelled us into first place so I just remember my teammates and that was probably one of the greatest moments I had especially with all my teammates and friends so yeah it's really cool to be a part of team golf and I think that's something that's really unique to college golf is that you get to really be a part of a team and spend time with your friends right yeah. Um, Nicole, um, what was your favorite golf course memory? Um, 
We play in a very silly tournament at my school every spring and fall usually. And unfortunately, we missed it this year, but we play kind of like a scramble, almost like a Ryder Cup with another school in our area. And last year, I got paired with our coach because there was an uneven number of men and women on the teams. And we played with the other school's coach and one of their men's team members. And to put it politely, we just smoked them the whole day, even all the groups. And it's just so much fun when you get to compete, especially with somebody you look up to so much and you learn what they're doing. So that tournament is definitely my favorite memory. Perfect. Um, Jennifer, can you tell us about your junior golf journey and how it led you to the university you're currently at? So um, it all started when I was 14, so my freshman year of high school. And I was a multi-sport athlete, so I played soccer, softball, and golf. So it was more of like my dad telling me, you know, you got to make a decision because I was going to put my full effort into whatever I chose. And the first thing I said was golf because that's just so, always something that I've been close to home in my heart. And so, um, yeah, my dad and I just kind of got started with, uh, recruitment pages and I contacted coaches and just kind of stuck my name out there for as many coaches as possible, joined as many junior tournaments as possible and just tried to see who was interested. I didn't really have kind of a idea of like division one or two, like I just kind of was like, I just want to play college golf and I want to be able to take the major I want and play college golf, which can be difficult especially for some uh, Division I athletes. Uh, they're more, I want to say, like, athletically, you know, like, it's a, it's a big deal for Division I. So I kind of decided more towards Division II. And so, and that's kind of where I met Frank, my coach. And he reached out to me and told me I could be a biochemistry major and play some really good competitive golf. And I have never regretted my decision since I've been going to UIS. So it's kind of there. <laughs> really good advice to make sure that you go to a university that can handle your like athletic needs and your academic needs which is different for everybody so when our juniors are looking for that just make sure you're looking for both right mm -hmm. um, so um, Nicole could you answer that question too um, about your junior golf journey and how it led you to where you are today it's pretty similar to Jen's I mean we played a lot of junior tournaments together um, with the VJGA and SCGA and I always wanted to make sure that school was the priority. So all through golf, I mean, even as a junior, I was always looking for a school that would put that education at the same priority as it does competitive golf. I played in a lot of junior tournaments and I enjoyed a lot of them. And I grew up with another scholar who graduated named Kylie Ward and she had gone to Waldorf. And I decided that I was gonna follow her there just because I heard so many great things about that school, and when I went there, it just felt so welcoming. And they always say about the Midwest, everybody's nice there, and I like it so much. So I really just, like you said, Lauren, just making sure that it's really a balance between golf and school. Definitely. Um, so now let's move into a little bit of recruiting, which I know, Jenny, you talked a little bit about. Um, but when did you know that you were going to play collegiate golf? Like, was it one round when you play, had an amazing round, you're like, I know that I can do it. Or when did you know that you actually wanted to pursue a higher level of golf? And um, we'll start with Jen. So, well, since I started when I was three, I grew up like watching golf and I would go and watch like tournaments and my dad and I would watch. So when I was little, I always was like, oh, I want to be Lexi Thompson or I want to be Tiger Woods. <laughs> So I always wanted to play at a higher level of competition and it wasn't really until I got, like I already decided I want to play college golf when I was 14, but it wasn't really until I was like 15 or 16 years old that it like really hit me that like I could be traveling all across the United States. I could be playing against girls that are just as good or even better than me and like you, I could be playing in front of crowds. I could be playing in front of like even, I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to play in front of cameras and like in championship like tournaments and when I was like 15 or 16 I just remember playing and going oh I can do this and I want to do this and it was just 
like that's kind of just when it hit me so so we only have one minute left and I just got a question from the group um is playing golf in high school the same as playing golf in college and we'll let Nicole handle that one before our group wraps up definitely not in high school, you go for an afternoon and you get to play for a little while, but in college, sometimes you're gone for four or five days, even depending on the tournament. And that's tough because when you get back from those four or five days, you also have all that work to turn into. In high school, they're a little more forgiving, but college golf is very different. Yeah, it's all about time management and balancing everything. A lot more things happen. So great question, Isabella. Thanks for sending that one in. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be talking about all things college golf. Um, so we have questions lined up for you. So for college golf, we're going to start with Callista. And just explain what your typical week looks like. I know it's probably lots of moving parts, but just something, you know, in general, what it looks like. Yeah, for sure. Um, our week is usually um, pretty stand. Um, it's the same every week unless there's a tournament. So uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'd wake up at 6 a.m. and bike to the gym um, where we'd have workouts from 6.30 till 7.30 in the morning. Um, we'd usually get breakfast either as a team or with a few friends um, right after workouts. And then class would start from 9 till 12.20. And then we'd make a mad rush to practice, which starts at one. So we try to get in on some food before we start practice from one till 3.30. Um, and then we'd most likely have an afternoon class, depending on which quarter we're in. But we'd most likely have an afternoon class from 4.30 till around 5.30, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Tuesday and Thursday, we get to sleep in a bit. Um, class would start at around 9 till 12.20 again, and then we'll have qualifying from 1 to 6. Um, and then depending on what classes we take, of course, we'd have a section from like 6 to 8, um, either um, Tuesday or Thursday. And then weekends, we have the option to practice on our own. So most of us just go out for an hour to three hours um, on our own time and just get some practice in on the weekends. And then travel, of course, um, we'd travel from um, we'd leave for uh, on Friday and get back usually um, Tuesday night, depending on how long the tournament is. But that's usually our travel schedule. All right. So with such a busy schedule, do you feel yes. like overwhelmed a lot? Or how did you manage from transitioning from high school golf to college golf scheduling? Um, I think the transition was definitely a little bit tough at first because it was um, new for me to be on my own and have to manage my schedule without my parents with me. Um, and of course, there was more things for me to do during the day, like the set workout in the morning was definitely a challenge at first waking up at that time. But um, as Natalie had mentioned earlier, I'm um, just making sure to write everything down, check things off my list, whether it's on my phone, on notes, or just writing it down on a piece of paper, just, keep, uh, just to keep myself in check. And, and just to make sure that I have everything covered, because there's a lot to keep track of, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So Natalie, does your week typically look like that or do you have other things being a different major and a different school? Um, it's pretty much the same. Like we have two days of morning practice, Monday, Wednesday in the morning, and then Tuesday, Thursday would be afternoon practice where we also hold qualifiers. And then uh, most of us have no class Fridays, so we don't have practice or workouts or anything. We typically would leave to tournaments that day as well. And Tournaments would last between three days, so it would be Friday, and then we would come back Sunday night. And can you explain to the girls what a qualifier is? So it's basically, we go out and play, well, at least for my school, we play nine holes during the afternoon practice time, and we are basically competing against our other teammates to try and get one of the four or five spots to go and play at the tournament. So they would take like our lowest five players and then they get the opportunity to go and play that weekend or whenever the tournament is. Thank you. Um, Kalisa, can you talk about how many hours a day you spend doing homework typically? Um, yeah, so depending on what class course, uh, I'd probably block off at least two to four hours at night. So once I get back home, um, back to my dorm from dinner, two to four hours to um, do my um, P sets and work with my 
um, dorm mates on them for sure. And it, we have to also account for office hours, which is um, teacher assistants run like these um, tutoring sessions where they can answer your problem set prob um, questions or just give you advice for the upcoming midterms or tests. So you'd have to schedule that into your schedule as well. So around two to five hours, more or less um, each okay. night. Yeah, and Natalie, is it the same for you? Um, I would say, I would say yes, just because this past um, semester, I had like a really big gap in between some of my classes. So I would use that time to do homework. So it doesn't really like affect me as much as when I didn't have that gap, because I would be up really late doing homework until like midnight or one. Yeah. So do you feel like you have th um, time to do other things besides golf with such a packed schedule and also a lot of time spending on classes? Um, yeah, I mean, I have, I have two jobs along with golf and school, so that's already pretty packed as it is. But I still have time to go out and hang out with friends or do stuff that interests me. So I think it's just, it all comes down to how you manage your time and what's, what you prioritize in your life. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, Calista, how do you think the coaching staff at your school has influenced your success both on the golf course and academically? Um, yeah, I think I, I have um, my coaching staff at school has done a great and amazing job. Um, coach Walker and our new assistant coach, um, Coach Maddie Shields at Stanford, um, they've done a great job with um, helping me Get, gain a better understanding of my game through the analysis of like st uh, more statistical analysis of my game and the use of um, TrackMan, which we're lucky to have at Stanford. So going coming into college, I didn't um, really look at my stats as much as I did in college, and I did not use TrackMan coming into Stanford. So they really helped me gain a better understanding on how um, these tools could help me improve my game, and it has helped a lot. How do you manage the stress of college life? <laughs> um, I actually just talked about this the last breakout room. Um, time management was a huge thing for me. I had to learn to start papers and projects earlier than the day that they were due. And um, just kind of make sure that I was always on top of my schoolwork as well as uh, making sure I had enough time to eat, sleep. I wasn't going to sleep at like 3 a.m and um, always going to class on time, that was important. But just, I would say, big key is time management. Perfect, and Aaliyah, how about you? Yeah, the same thing. I think, I think a really key thing, especially once you start looking into colleges and getting into that routine, is to like map out your calendar. So like maybe not just through the day or like through the week, maybe months, because a really huge thing, especially for colleges, professors aren't going to remind you, you know, three or four weeks before there's a test or there's a quiz. You know, you need to make sure that you know those things and you can just lay it out all on um, a calendar that you have and just look through maybe a week ahead and see like, oh, I have a quiz next week. Maybe I should study for that. So those are the just kind of like few things that really helped me in college. Calista, um, how do you manage stress during college life? Um, stress, that's a, that's a tricky one. Um, so there's, you're always going to be a little stressed at times, no matter how, um, how, how on top of your um, schedule you are. But I always try to keep, um, take some time to just like, not think about either golf or school, maybe just take 20 minutes out of my schedule just to sit down and take in like the nice, the beautiful campus, like everything that's around me, maybe just do some breathing exercises or even I'm, I like meditating for 20 minutes. So just closing my eyes, sitting down and in, in a chair in my room and just uh, clearing my mind of all thoughts. And that helps a lot with managing stress. And 20 minutes is not that much if you think about your 24 hour day. So there's always some time for that. You just need to put some time into it. <laughs> And for you, Coach Natalie, how, how do you uh, ma manage that stress of college life, especially since things have kind of changed for all of us? Um, well, typically, I either cry about it at first when it gets like really overwhelming, which is not the best way. But then I also just try to like take time to do stuff that I enjoy just to get my mind off of that. Or naps also help me forget about that. 
but I honestly just like putting a face mask, listening to my favorite music, painting, just doing stuff that makes me happy and just try to relieve that stress. Awesome. And then this is a question from our uh, chat, uh, Callista. What is it like to go to Stanford and play golf at Stanford? Um, it's definitely a dream come true. I've always dreamt of going to Stanford um, ever since I was 10. Um, I worked um, throughout junior golf. I really worked hard at um, um, fulfilling this dream of mine. So at school, I worked hard for um, specifically to go to Stanford. And being at Stanford now, it's definitely a great, um, I'm very blessed to have that opportunity. Um, I'm surrounded by amazing um, faculty and my, I have an ama amazing coaches to support me throughout my golf career as well. So definitely a great experience and something to strive for if you do want to. Awesome. And then uh, Coach Nelly, um, why did you choose the college that you chose? Um, if you could share with the girls. Um, I chose Whittier just because being a division three, I think it was a good balance between competitive golf and academics. Like it's pretty equal. There's not really that stress to win every single tournament or to do well every single time. So I really like that. And also being so close to home and being like a local college really played a part in my decision because I don't think, I think like just tra um, commuting from my house to there was like a really good decision that I made. Cause I don't think I would be able to last dorming like really far away from my home. Awesome. Awesome. We have a, a question that we want to ask from the chat room here is, what does competitive golf look like for a 13-year-old? Uh, Calista, if you can start that one, and then we'll have Coach Nat uh, reply as well. Um, yeah, so as a 13-year-old, I was playing golf at, um, so I played at the local San Diego Junior Golf Association, and also SCPGA, which is Southern California um, of the Junior Golf Association of Southern California. And I also started playing AJGA events, which is a big um, junior golf circuit at that time. So that's um, the American Junior Golf Association. And um, they're a really big part of, um, they help a lot with the recruiting process since college coaches are constantly watching those events as well. But that's what the events that I were, was playing at that time. Excellent, and then Coach Nat. Um, so at 13, I think I was involved with the Long Beach Junior Golf Association. So I was playing there every Friday and they would have some tournaments and competitive things there. Also in the summer, I know there are the Alley County tournaments that you can play in, which I think that age would be nine holes or 18 holes. It just depends on the age group. But those are really good tournaments to start getting you or giving you the feel of like what competitive golf is like in high school or at a higher level. Awesome. So I want to ask both of you, um, what is your major and how did you go about choosing that major? Um, so it took me a while to decide what I wanted to major in. And I picked studio art just because I've been really interested in art since I was really young especially in high school, getting involved with ASB. I was doing a bunch of like the big posters, the big paintings and all that. And I just knew that it was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I'm not really sure what I want to do career, career wise yet, but I do know that it has to do with art and that I'm really passionate about what I'm studying right now. And Calista? Yeah, for me, I'm studying product design and minoring in um, economics. I was not always on this track. I initially started in a management science and engineering degree, which is similar to what the track that I'm on now. But I decided that I was very interested in um, product design and how you could find possible solutions to society's problems through creating these new products. And it was very interesting to me. And I love econ, so I do want to go into um, investment banking or run my own company one day after playing professionally. Awesome. So we have a question from the chat. Um, it says, uh, do you need to win competitions for colleges to notice you? And let's uh, start, uh, Coach Natalie, let's start with you with that question. Um, I would say no, but... At third, oh wait, 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 let me read. Let me read the question. Oh, you could see that. Okay. Excellent. Um, 
Yeah, it's, I think winning obviously is always like really good, especially to put like in your your little bio that you start building as you're getting older. But they don't just look at winning like for me, I never I was never like the best player. I was never one to come in first place every time, but I was still able to to play college golf. So it just depends on like the level that you want to play in the future. I'm pretty sure it was different for Calissa going to division one, but I think it's just, if you show them that you are dedicated and that you're always practicing and just trying to play well, like you're progressing through the years, then, then they'll notice you during recruiting. And then Calissa, do you want to ask that question? I see. Uh, there's another question in the chat, but if you can ask, ask that one real quick, and then mm -hmm. um, if we don't get to this one, we'll do it in the main menu. Yeah, um, I second Natalie, and winning is not everything. Of course, they look at results, but I think coaches really love just watching you, um, how you handle yourself on the course and your reactions to shots and how you come back from challenges. I think that's a big thing. Um, you don't win every single tournament, so they want to see your resilience and your perseverance through things like that. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. And then as far as like your pre-shot routine, if you could uh, go through that before they um, move us back to the main section. Yeah, so um, I really liked um, the Vision 54 came to Stanford and they helped us out with our pre-shot routines. And I like the idea of think box, play box. So before you go into your shot, you think about all the win, like you take into account the wind, um, your direction, what club, uh, the distance, the direction that you want to go to, what shot shape you want. So you think about that all before you step up to the ball and hit. So I would probably just choose, make my club selection, um, check the wind, go up to the ball, set up, and then just not think about anything else. So that's my pre-shot routine usually. And Callisto, um, what was your biggest transition from junior golf to college? Um, the biggest transition for me just had to be um, just not having my parents around. I was always used to having my parents with me. They traveled with me. Um, they went to tournaments with me. And they still watch my tournaments now, but just for practices, it was definitely new. Um, being um, gained more independence with my game and just with my schedule in general. No one was there to remind me when to go to a meeting or when to go from class to practice. So that was the biggest change, just ha being on your own. It was nice. It's nice to learn that um, early on, for sure. How many girls are on your golf team and how many actually travel for tournaments? Uh, this year we had six and we usually only take five, but we took five or six since we were really small this year. Next year we're going to have eight girls, I believe, and we usually just take five per tournament. We have six as well, but we only play five. Our sixth girl always comes with us to tournaments, but she plays as an individual instead of as part of our team. And a um, question here from Chelsea. Um, let's to pass this over to Stephanie. Um, what is your schedule after golf season like? And how do you fill up those big time gaps now that you don't have to practice so much? Well, I'm not sure if all programs are like this, but even after our season was done, we were still out on the golf course every day practicing. So my schedule Monday through Friday was pretty much something golf related from 6 a.m. to about 11, 11.30. And then I had afternoon classes that would end around like 5.36. Go back to my um, apartment, eat some dinner, get some food and try to find some sleep and then start all over the next day. So um, I, I know for some other sports, like their off season is kind of like the relax, the relaxing season or time, but for my school, it was constantly golf all year round. So. All right. And Aaliyah, did you feel like that was similar for you? Yeah, but like, especially after NCAA season was over and all those like in season stuff, I definitely had to make sure my game was um on par <laughs> pun intended um but i had to make sure my game was a level because i did have a lot of tournaments signed up in the summer so it was always this like cyclical event that like my coaches always uh, encouraged us to go play tournaments in the summer really wrap up your your game and understand where you can fine tune it and things like that so yeah it's it's like that it's still golf <laughs> Awesome. So Coach Liddy had a question. Um, since both of you are seniors, what's next for both of you? 
Nikki, you want to start us off? I would like to teach for the Department of Defense because I am marrying a sailor this coming June. And I would really like to teach military children because I think they're just a little bit misunderstood. They move around a lot. I just can't wait to be a teacher. So I'm trying to actually get into med school after this. So I really want to be a surgical anesthesiologist. Um, and so I've just been kind of looking up schools that I want to apply to. I'm trying to take kind of a gap year or period of time um, after I graduate because I still want to kind of play a little bit more before I commit myself to eight more years of schooling and like all of that. So, but I'm super excited because I finally decided on this, I want to say last year, because I kind of was just all over the place with that. But now I have a path and I'm super excited to see where it goes. Cool, good for you, Jennifer. So question for Stephanie, um, what is your dream job now that you've graduated? What do you want to do with the rest of your life? Um, as frustrating as golf is most of the time, I still love it to death. And I actually hope to one day be the head coach of a college team. So I enjoyed my time so much as a player on, the, on my golf team that I want to make sure that I give the same experience to future, hopefully, college golfers like yourselves. And that you guys also have an opportunity to just have an amazing college time and continue loving golf and um, just hopefully get a golf scholarship so that way you don't have to pay for all of your school. So, yeah. Um, what's the best piece of advice you could give an SCJ junior? I would say um, perseverance, patience, and practice. It's kind of the three P's of life that are incredibly important. And if you can just keep going at it and you keep practicing and you just kind of wait things out, it, everything will work out for you if you put the work that's just one of the biggest things I learned on myself and figuring out everything, especially with all my classes and whatnot. So, but if you put in the work, you'll get there. <laughs> uh, my biggest piece of advice would be to go to the school and have the major that you truly want, because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one that's going to work every day after you find your career and you're going to be spending every day at your school. So just make sure that it's something that you truly like and want to do.